In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. A special shout out to our teachers today. So good to have you. Welcome. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. When I came to you, brothers and sisters, proclaiming the mystery of God, I did not come with sublimity of words or of wisdom. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I came to you in weakness and fear and much trembling, and my message and my proclamation were not with persuasive words of wisdom, but with the demonstration of spirit and power, so that your faith might rest not on human wisdom, but on the power of God. The word of the Lord. The responsorial psalm, Lord, I love your commands. How I love your Lord, your law, O oh Lord. It is my meditation all the day. Lord, your command has made me wiser than my enemies, for it is ever with me. I have more understanding than all my teachers when your decrees are my meditation. I have more discriminant I have more discriminant than the elders because I observe your precepts From every evil way I withhold my feet that I may keep your words From your ordinances I turn not away for you have instructed me Alleluia, Alleluia. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus came to Nazareth where he had grown up and went according to his custom into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up to read and was handed a scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found the passage where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. Rolling up the scroll, He handed it back to the attendant and sat down. 
and the eyes of all in the synagogue looked intently at him. He said to them, Today this scripture passage is fulfilled in your hearing. And all spoke highly of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They also asked, Is this not the son of Joseph? He said to them, Surely you will quote quote me this proverb, Physician, cure yourself, and say, Do here in your native place the things we heard heard were done in Capernaum. And he said, Amen, I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own native place. Indeed, I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the sky was closed for three and a half years, and a severe famine spread over the entire land. It was to none of these that Elijah was sent, but only to a widow in Zarephath in the land of Sidon. Again, there were many lepers in Israel during the time of Elisha the prophet, yet not one of them was cleansed, but only Naaman the Syrian. When the people in the synagogue heard this, they were filled with fury. They rose up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town had been built, to hurl him down headlong. But he passed through the midst of them and went away. The Gospel of the Lord. I love this first reading because Paul, arguably, is one of the greatest preachers that has ever walked the earth, right? Paul, the the apostle to the Gentiles. And he says, I don't come to you with fancy words or wisdom, but he only comes to bring Christ and him crucified. And I couldn't help but think of uh, a certain prayer, right? One that, that may be simple, but one that holds real power, and it's the the rosary. In the rosary, we don't use uh, fancy orations or, I don't know, I guess fancy prayers, but we use some of the simplest prayers that there are, the Our Father and the Hail Mary. And what they are in simplicity, I guess, they're full of power. Right, the one prayer that Jesus himself taught us, the Our Father, and then the Hail Mary, the, the angelic Psalter, right, it's given to us through the words of the angel Gabriel, right, these two powerful prayers, one of the first ones that we learn, right, growing up in our faith, these are what make up the rosary. And behind the, the prayers of the Our Father and the Hail Mary, we meditate upon Jesus Christ and his life. Right, the rosary is the prayer of the Gospels because it goes through these great, important mysteries of the life of Christ. And so today, we once again reconfirm, um, we confirm this powerful prayer, which is the rosary. Um, we know that it's given to us by Our Lady herself. And um, we just pray that uh, we may make the rosary more and more a part of our life. Because while it may not be the fanciest of prayers, it is powerful, right? And it meditates upon the life of Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And so for you that pray the rosary, great job. For those of us who need to practice it a little more, maybe today could be that day where we buckle down and say, I will pray the rosary today. Right? I'll do it because Father Louis said so. <laughs> All right? God bless you. And now we bring our prayers and petitions before our loving Father. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for Archbishop Hebda and all bishops, that they may be prudent and humble leaders of the church. We pray to the Lord. We pray for ourselves here, for this entire community of St. Stephen's, that we may grow in our devotion of the Holy Mother of God through the rosary. We pray to the Lord. We pray for our school, we pray for the faculty and staff, we pray for our students, 
uh, that this year may be one of safety and that the children may grow in wisdom and in grace, we pray to the Lord. We pray for this nation. We pray for peace and an end to violence. We pray to the Lord. We pray for an increase in vocations to the priesthood, diaconate, consecrated life and holy marriages. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the poor, the sick, the suffering, the lonely, and the homebound, that they may know of the compassion of the heart of Jesus. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all the souls of the faithful departed, that they may rest in peace. We pray to the Lord. And now we take some time to offer to the Father the silent petitions of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. God our Father, you are all good and in your goodness you have given us your Son. Grant we pray the grace to embrace the Holy Rosary of Our Lady so as to dive deeper into the mysteries of the life of your Son. We ask this through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer on us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery, it may accomplish in power, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving itself is your gift. Since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. From the night he was betrayed, 
he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Stephen, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and Bernard our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you and our neighbor. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, it looks like it stopped raining, or it sounds like it stopped raining. So for communion, especially up in the, the balcony, you can receive right here at the 5th Street entrance. And I think our policy, right, is that you'll go right out those doors, but it stopped raining, so hopefully it's not that bad. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. 